Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Friday morning. Getting ready to wrap up a good week and I got some seafood to give away. We're going to call sea quarters in a minute, but first, Let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort and needs. High today's getting into the 70s and low down to 39. Rain coming. So it's winter storm, winter rain, and all kind of stuff. Uh, that's the way it is, and, and we can deal with it. Uh, the water temperature is 58. It's dropping all the way down to 58 even right now. The river region is brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. Like we said yesterday, look at Appalachia Cola at Blunstown. It's 18.4, actually went up from yesterday. 18.4 this morning, and a Choctaw at Careville, it went up. It's at 12.4. Both of them are still on the way up. Both of them rising water for the weekend. So that's going to have a, an amazing effect on, on, on what happens if you're planning to get outdoors in the river system. So it's going to be completely different than you've been used to the last couple of weeks. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Good strong tides, I mean good ones. Low at 8.33 this morning, high at 10.22 this afternoon or late this, late tonight. And fishing game times, let's look at that. Brought to you by Blue Water Outriggers, our fishing game times, 12.11 to 2.11, right in the middle of the day. We're going to, the wind is coming strong, coming out of south at 20. It's going to be pounding along the uh, coastline all throughout the panhandle coming that strong uh, out of the south. So uh, what I'm going to do, we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to, while I'm going to break, I'm going to call Sea Quarters Marina and let's get a report from them. So let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, folks. And on the phone, just got in touch with Captain Kim down at Sea Quarters Marina. Good morning, Captain Kim. Good morning, Mr. Chester. Okay, we want to get a good report. We haven't talked to you in a while. We haven't talked to you since last year, right before Christmas. And uh, so, what's going on down your way? Well, we got uh, some pretty weather coming up next uh, this coming up weekend. So hopefully, somebody will be able to get out there and do some fishing. I okay. uh, had some folks go out uh, Thursday morning, and he showed me a couple of real nice pictures I'm hoping to get over to you. Uh, a good-sized look down and a beautiful uh, mangrove snapper, about 27 inches. Whoa. And uh, they, that was Thursday, uh, excuse me, that was Wednesday. Uh, last Wednesday when they went out, we had a little bit of a pretty day after that nasty storm. And gosh, our hearts go out to everybody there in Panama City. They got tore up. Yes, yes, it was pretty rough over here. Uh, right. Well, we're looking at, I was looking at the, uh, I'm getting ready to do the fishing report later. If people are going to fish, I know the water's really high. We've got high river readings here. I guess the Carabelle River is going to be pretty high too with all that rain. Yeah, we did have, uh, we didn't have as much rain, I don't think, as uh, y'all over there, but uh, the uh, tide with the new moon and what have you is kind of running pretty good, so. It's uh, not all that good, but there's a couple spots right up in the bayou here in front of the office. They've been trout fishing, okay. Uh, you know, staying out of the wind, and they've been having some pretty good luck. So okay, that's, that's the nice. thing. That's the beauty down there. You can get out of the wind and yet catch some fish and some good holes up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got plenty of good holes like that, and they've been using just the frozen shrimp and uh, uh, top spinners. You know, the mirror lures and what have you. So that's been doing pretty good. Good deal. That, that sounds really good. And if, if I, I'm going to try to get down there pretty soon and, and uh, check on y'all. I know it, it's been real busy. Uh, the winter fishing it should be good, though, right, is what you're saying, the winter fishing? Oh, most definitely, yeah. We've uh, we've got the American Great Loop uh, folks coming in and out now, trying to get a little further south for this cold weather. Okay. And uh, they're having all kinds of fun offshore, you know, on the way to, uh, say, Tarpon. Uh, you know, they're getting the uh, stretch 30s and trolling off the back, and they've heard a couple of good stories from that, so that's pretty fun, too. Oh, I bet they are having fun, the, the loopers. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, send us some of those pictures. We'll show them next week, but it's great talking to you. You too. You have a great weekend. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We'll talk uh -huh. to you later. Goodbye. Okay, I always love to get a live report on exactly what's going on. Don't get any better than when you actually can call and talk, talk to the folks on what's going on down there. 
uh, you know, right there on the front line. And it, it's a special place. I'll talk about it later in the report, in the fishing report, and show you some places. Okay, now, let's jump on some pictures. Yesterday, I, I was showing some pictures uh, right toward the end. I didn't get to show all of them about the St. Vincent Island, about this guy finding his old black and white pictures, and he's colorizing them and just making them look so, so cool. I don't know how they do it, but it's remarkable. But just that history, now we're talking about uh, almost a hundred years ago on an island here right off our coast. I mean, that's, you know, historically, that's just, uh, that just floors me. So here we go, here, here's some pictures right here. This is a Weefing family from, from the East Point area, okay? And they, here they are, I, I got tickled. This is on the house that they built, that was built down there. I don't know who built that house, but it's still standing for over hundred something years. But I got, I got to, I zoomed in on the old shotgun and I thought it was a double barrel, and it still looks like an over and under. And I, but anyway, he's got a cigar in his mouth, and uh, that's, just, <laughs> that's just a cool picture. And of course, that's the cabbage palm and all uh, the palmettos on the left. So that's right on St. Vincent Island. Here's it uh, right after it was built in 1921. So that is 102 years old. And, and you look at the hurricane just going through, the Category 5s and the floods and all, it's still there. So. You, and they had to take the equipment over and the lumber and everything, they had to take it over there by boat. They wanted to drive up with a truck and a wagon by a barge. This is the oyster pond on the back side of St. Vincent. And look at, look at all the oysters That's all, and in the background. That's all oysters back there. And they're just picking them up. That is obviously why it's called oyster pond. A remarkable place. Uh, when, when I hunted there before, I got close to this area. It's real marshy, but then there's a trail that goes down to it, and it's a Native American trail, I guess, because uh, man didn't make it. So, but you could come in from the uh, Indian Pass side to, to see that. It's just not a cool. Uh, now this is all colorized, but this is on the front porch, and they're having. Can you imagine how they how they dress up that nice over on an island in the 20s and 30s? But that's the family. I was trying to look at the food, I was, what they're having, but obviously this is, uh, I mean, I know uh, that's gotta be the Whiffing family and some, some of their others, but I know the family, if any of y'all know them and they're watching, make sure they, they can get these pictures and all. I know it'll be very, they'll really enjoy looking at them. Okay, one more uh, in the early 1900, but it, is that not a classic picture? You can go there today and make the same picture because no civilization has actually <laughs> gotten in there and had put in, okay, I think that's all of them there. Uh, but uh, it's, it's just really cool, and I hope you enjoy that, a flashback, but the, the pictures of, of that 100-something-year-old house still standing on an island in the Florida Panhandle, that ain't nothing but cool. Let's take a break, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's uh, quicker go over the seasons. I know we're still sort of right in the middle of it, but uh, let's look at the date right here real quick about when the season, the uh, gun season is ending. Uh, general gun season is going to end on February the 18th, and muzzle loading goes from 19th through the 25th on the lower bottom there. Just like just refresh everyone's memory. Sometimes you get busy and, and uh, don't think about it. The possession limit, don't forget now, four. The annual bag limit is five. And you can kill two doe. Now, one thing too, on private lands, uh, it's a deer management program and uh, hunting preserve, they're excluded uh, you know, on private land. And I think most of y'all know that. Now, I've got a story here. I, I read it, I had to read it twice to get the whole thing. <laughs> okay. This is, we got deer. This is a woman, uh, she says she killed a suffering key deer. This is down in the Keys to put it out of his misery. She got in trouble, okay, so this deer was in, a, was in a fence. I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you, but she was facing a year in federal prison and local environmental said it was a mercy killing of an endangered key deer in November. But, in it, but she was still sentenced a year of probation and fined $4,000. Bless her heart, Wendy Kilfer of Big Pine Key will have to work 100 hours of community service. Uh, she pleaded guilty this month, and, and her sentencing was Thursday. She shot the deer in the head on November the 16th. Listen to this story. The environmental group Save Our Key, Save Our Key Deer 
It said the, uh, the rest saying the animal had been suffering for seven days after su been trapped in two fences and the antlers were entangled. Both sides of the deer were cut because of the repeated thrashing. A local resident was able to free it from the fences but, got, but not the rope of its an antlers. So local, bottom centers, locals and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Agents tried to find the deer for the next few days. When they found the found it, it was lying. Listen to this. Uh, in, in the street, the people at the scene called FWC, but they couldn't raise anyone. <laughs> Meanwhile, the locals moved the deer to a shaded area on private property. The severely suffering deer was having trouble breathing and descriptions by people at the scene was likely surf, suffering from organ failure during the, what they call that capture myopathy. So what happened? Bottom line, she went in her vehicle, secured a high caliber handgun, shot the deer in the head at close range, and killed it. According to witnesses, the deer's death was not immediate. When law enforcement later questioned Kiffer, she, she denied being at the scene. But anyway, I had a video. But anyway, they sent us there for $4,000, but they actually changed the policy uh, because the situation here has changed. The, the euthanizing policy is going to be different now. So FWC did change that. I just thought that was amazing. Real quick, uh, just a lot of times we overlook uh, all the things that happen on hunting trip. Pat Bryant sent this, uh, Cheez-Its, sweet tea, and deer hunting with Papa. They're out in the woods, they're, on, they're deer hunting out there, listening to dogs, and, and that's a good way to get them started. I always have them a good snack. Look at those cheeses in the lap right there. Good memories. I just, we just talked to them. We'll go ahead and I, I put this in here because we were talking to them this morning. The shootout is going to be June the 15th. Okay, 2024. Okay, really, uh, okay, nice. Uh, this is really interesting. This is Carol Allen. Hello, Winston. Pray we all have a safe and healthy year. Sending you a picture of something my grandson found on our property on New Year's Day. We, on New Year's Day, we had fried hog chiles, black eyed peas, rice, and greens. All very good. See you soon. Herbert and Carol up in Cottondale. Look what their grandson found. Is that not cool? Is that not a good way to spend some Christmas holidays out there looking for uh, airheads? Look at that one. Good job. Thanks for sharing that. Good picture there. Okay, this is important. Now, coming up, on January 27th, this is from our state park system. This is volunteers, okay? And it's different state parks. Panhandle, we need you. And it's like a week and what they're doing, you can just volunteer for a particular day, and we invite you to join us to explore Corridor Week by volunteering at the Florida State Park. Every state park relies on volunteers, and each, each state park has different things. So here's a list. I looked up our list in our, here in the Panhandle. Uh, what's interesting, on January 20th, they're not all on 27th. See, some 28th and all the way down to the 3rd. But look at, okay, let's start at the top. Blackwater. They're going invasive plant remover, Deer Lake. It's already full. They don't have any more room. They're going to actually plant some pines. Oak Lotney, bridge repair. Look at St. George Island. It is full. Isn't that cool? They're going to do pollinator beautification. Blackwater, we're going all the way. Let's see. Eden Gardens. Terrell State Park, uh, right there in the center. Trail maintenance. Top Cell Hill, Litter Patrol, Lake Talcum, Litter Patrol, just picking up trash. No, third from the bottom, Camp Helen, Park Boundary Cleanup. And then Great Beach, the last one, Longleaf, that'll be a fun one, February 3rd, Longleaf Pine Restoration. You know what I, who I don't see on here? St. Joe State Park. They could plant some uh, sea oaks for erosion. I wonder why they're not on. Okay, so you see it. So if you want to do it, go ahead and, uh, and volunteer. You just get a hold of the State Park system. Uh, what about, uh, did we talk about St. Andrew State Park? Was that on here? I didn't see it. St. Andrew State Park's not on here. That's interesting. Two big state parks. Let's show one more picture, okay? From the Florida Panhandle Hunters. Uh, pretty ate me and my son killed in front of the hounds in Guff County. Check it out. Well, look at his next picture. You think, you think he's proud of that book? 
I said, good job. Good job right there. I, I enjoy showing those. Let me show one more. Doug Lurie, real quick. Doug said, it did not hurt a thing to shoot a three. They sent this to me, a three to four year old eight point. Maybe better than shooting a doe. Whittle down some of my system to bring a deer and load along with a ch chain with a golf cart. So what he did, that's how, he, let's see, that's how he put it up in the truck. Doug Lurie, good viewer there, nice book. And it's easy to clean that way. <laughs> good job. Thank you, Doug. I said, I, I said, that really is good job on that. Okay, we gotta move along. Time flies when we're having fun like this. Gonna add some names. Now listen, if your names, we're a couple days behind, uh, which is normal, which we should be, but uh, if Gail keeps this master list, I told her she don't have to because we do it in here, but she has a master list, you know, this long, with all, she writes down everybody's name. So if, if you wait another week or two and it hadn't been added in a week or two, then we'll, we'll check the master list. But so far, I think we're doing okay. So here we go. Uh, Gene Vaughn, okay, Mark Vaughn, Al Garza, Lynn Haven, uh, Michelle Rainey, Freeport. Oops, I dropped it. I'll get it. <laughs> Pete Rainey, Freeport. Josefina Ragged, Regardio, up there. Ernie Regardio. He's been my neighbor up there in Southport. D.W. Jacobs, Panama City. Matthew Shane Jacobs, Panama City. Janie Lyles, Jake, Janie Giles Jacobs, Panama City. Norman Thibodeau, Panama City. Norman, you don't need to get in seafood. You catch enough of those fish. <laughs> and, and it's better half, Ruth Thibodeau. And Sherburn Prowls, Panama City. And it better laugh, Emily Prowls. All right, that's some good outdoorsman right through there. So here we go, we're filling up right here. So we uh, let's go ahead and draw. This is our flighty drawing brought to us by Trop and Dock Seafood. And, I don't know about you, but oysters really, oysters and mud are just really good this time of year. And uh, so if I had a $20 gift certificate, I'd have a strong, I don't know whether I'd get mud or oysters, but I'd get one of those too. But here we are, $20 gift certificate. Let's stir it up really good. We might as well get a bigger jar, y'all keep sending your names in. Okay, and a winner of $20 all the way from St. Andrews, Edward Kirkland. There you go. And a big red snapper. Be fried up, be cooked it on the grill. I'm going to fry mine up. And the winner is, how about Thomas Platt? Thomas Platt. So, Edward Kirkland and Thomas Platt are the winners. So, we're going to get, we're going to take a break and get set up for our famous Friday fishing forecast. So, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back and welcome, welcome to our famous Friday fishing forecast brought to us by Jessica Ling Insurance and her insurance and financial group up there in Lynn Haven. We've got to get Jessica on the show soon. And also brought to us by Matt Andrews of Hammer Down Roofing. I have to look at the name because it used to be hammer, it's been Hammer Down Construction. It's Hammer Down Roofing. So Matt Andrews and Jessica Ling, we appreciate you bringing us this Friday report. Now listen, I, I, I put some work into this. I check with people and, and look at reports and all. And so what you hear from me is frontline stuff. Like we just talked about Sea Quarters Marina. I wrote down three things last night, the top three things to do this weekend. First of all, we got this weather, which is, you know, we can't control it, but it's really, we have to deal with it. And it's, the rivers are super high. You can see that, but it's, so I, it sort of limits our, our ability to do certain things. You don't want to get on the river and do any kind of uh, much fishing there. But here, here's the three things you can do this weekend. Uh, and it should be pretty decent tomorrow. Number one, I put up the creek. If you're going to get anywhere, Go to a, to a creek. I'm gonna mention some creeks when we get to the report. So I'm gonna show some of the creeks I'm talking about. So you know, put in a creek land and, and just stay in a creek area. Number two, uh, pile on the pilings, and I'm talking about bridge pilings and dock pilings because of the sheephead, and we'll talk about that. The third thing, I put P and L, uh, ponds and lakes. I hit the ponds and lakes. So those, those are top three things to do. But going to the creeks now. Let's jump on here. We'll start on this end, normally start on the west end and come eastward. We're going to start eastward and go westward today, just to change things up. Okay, here we go. Down at Carabelle, we just talked to Sea Quarters Marina, and we're talking about the Carabelle River. She's talking about getting some areas, get out of the wind, and see how you can get in these little curves here. Right there in the center is Sea Quarters Marina, uh, right there, but then you've got the bridge, and the, so you can work that Carabelle River really good. Let's move on over here. Move on over here. And, 
to East Point. Of course, we always talk about East Point Bridge. I'm gonna skip that today because I wanna get into here. I hadn't mentioned this in a while, Whiskey George Creek. Look at that. That is full of speckled trout this time of, this time of year. Whiskey George Creek, and it, look at there. It's just a really cool place and a lot of history behind it. So that's gonna be a good creek to get, it, get behind. I'm gonna have to move fast, I'm running behind. Okay, Whiskey George, and then move on down to Depot Creek. Depot Creek, all the way down here in St. Joe. We we'll talk about, okay, Lake Wimico, Depot Creek, right there in the center. Depot Creek is gonna be good. Going into Lake Wimico, it's right there in the center. That's Depot Creek. Moving along over here, East Bay. Right East Bay, Sandy Creek. We'll talk about Sandy Creek a lot. That's gonna be good this weekend. Sandy Creek will be really good this weekend. Uh, moving on over here to North Bay. And of course, we're talking about, all we're talking about our two creeks here. So that area there is gonna be good. Move over to Choctahatchee. And over in Choctahatchee, you had put in, uh, we're gonna, you know, usually I say put in a Pilcher Park or over here, uh, the other landing right there, Pilcher Park or Brown Park, right, Greater Brown. That, you can fish around those pilings and all, but we're getting a south wind, so that Pilcher Park should be really good fishing right in there. And anyway, let's move on, up, let's move on quickly over here to, to Freeport. And I, I, I let's see, way up over here, Freeport, anyway, Rocky Bayou, and then over here, Freeport. All these areas here, those, all those areas there are gonna be good, but the main thing is just, you know, try to find some good, clean water, and try to, like, like we were talking about earlier, Captain Kim, just get some cut shrimp, if some frozen shrimp, that even, if you get fresh shrimp, fine, frozen shrimp's gonna be good. Let's see, I also wrote down, Make sure that you have your life jacket on, okay? I know we talk about that all the time, make sure you have your life jacket on, and also, you know, stay in communication with people and, and be careful in open water, because that wind's really blowing today. But you can catch some fish this weekend. Our, our, our target area is going from here to sort of here. You really have to concentrate on some areas. I know J.B. Hillard and those guys, they're gonna be staying up on the upper end of the creek and this weekend over in the soft hatchet system. And over there in East Point, you see what all you can do. You can surf fishing, and I think it's out. Don't worry about surf fishing. I wouldn't do any kind of fishing in, in any open water. So, but you get, get out of that wind, okay? It should be good. We're gonna have to wrap it up again. Next week, uh, I'll be here on Monday, and we'll have a video from a uh, hunt I went with Matthew uh, last, last Saturday, so we'll have that video. Then I've got Travis coming in next week. Got a couple of special guests coming in. So all kind of big things going on. So y'all keep sending your names in, we'll get y'all entered. You have a great weekend. Uh, do something good for someone else and enjoy, enjoy the outdoors while you can and let's do all we can to take care of outdoors. Do something good and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.